Bye. Bye. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, it's Hervoye Petek. Hervoye. Uh, <laughs> I, I come from Zagreb, so not, not too far away from where you are. Yeah. And uh, anyway, I would like to tell you about uh, topological plasmonics on nanofemto scale. So, uh, as you all know, light propagates at uh, 300 nanometers per femtosecond. And uh, we would like to be able to uh, take movies of light on such a, a space time scale. And uh, to do that, uh, there's nothing faster than light, but we can rely on nonlinear um, effects to detect uh, optical and uh, plasmonic fields on such a uh, space time scale. So what I want to tell you in particular is uh, how we can uh, tie light into knots, such as uh, suggested by this uh, Escher image. And uh, uh, you can see that this image is uh, chiral. And uh, so we will make uh, chiral uh, plasmonic fields and uh, detect how, how these fields propagate in space and time. So the work was started by my student, Yanan Dai. He graduated. Uh, Atari Ghosh is a, a graduate student about to graduate. Uh, Sena Yang is a postdoc, and Ji Kang Zhu is uh, another student working on this project. And uh, Robin Huang uh, introduced us to the topic of uh, plasmonic vortices. So I want to tell you about uh, topological quasi-particles. So uh, our quasi-particles are of uh, electromagnetic fields, uh, but uh, such quasi-particles exist uh, in different aspects of physics. And uh, they were first uh, described by Tony Scrime in 1962, where he was describing uh, surfaces of constant barium baryon density in nuclei, and uh, uh, he was trying to describe uh, atomic nuclei solitons of light meson fields. Now, these uh, uh, topological structures have not been uh, detected, and maybe with zepto-second zepto spectroscopy, one might be able to uh, image such fields uh, in atomic nuclei. However, uh, such fields are more common and uh, uh, they have been observed in vectorial magnetic magnetization textures where they form skirmion or meron uh, magnetization textures where the magnetization uh, points up at the center of the particle or down and uh, undergoes a pi phase shift uh, to the barrier. So this is a skirmion, which has a topological charge of one, uh, and uh, they can also be meron uh, uh, magnetization textures uh, where uh, the spin goes from vertical to horizontal and it has a topological of charge of one half. Uh, these, uh, so the merons are often called half skirmions because if you put two merons together, you get a skirmion. Okay, and uh, such uh, field and spin textures have been uh, discovered uh, first at, uh, in atomic nuclei, but uh, uh, they have been observed in ferromagnetic materials with, where these magnetization uh, distributions are stable quasi-particle on nanometer spatial scales. Uh, they exist in ferroelectrics. Uh, they have been discovered in Bose-Einstein condensates. And uh, I will talk about vectorial optical fields. Uh, so we had uh, a talk by Professor Capasso, which uh, discussed structured light. And uh, we are going to, I'm going to show you uh, how such fields exist uh, in uh, plasmonic uh, materials in two dimensions. So uh, this shows you a surface plasmon polariton field. 
uh, which uh, so this is this shows a single cycle of such field, and the the arrows show the electric field of such plasmons, uh, which oscillate from being uh, normal to the surface to being uh, parallel to the surface. So the plasmons propagate at metal vacuum interface. Uh, they penetrate uh, maybe 10 or 20 nanometers into the metal and few tens of nanometers into the vacuum. And uh, we want to use such fields uh, to uh, change their topology and uh, uh, specifically to generate vectorial optical fields. And uh, we want to image that. So we are going to image them by photo electron emission microscopy which gives us nanometer spatial and femtosecond temporal scale. And uh, I want to uh, tell you about uh, how we design such vortices by spin orbit interaction of light. Uh, I will show you how we can generate various uh, plasmonic vortices uh, with uh, uh, spin textures and topology. And uh, finally, uh, I want to point out that uh, only 5% of the universe uh, responds to light and uh, the remaining 27% is dark matter. And uh, we would like to use uh, such uh, vectorial fields to detect dark matter. And uh, I will tell you how one might be able to do this. Okay, so uh, I will be talking then about uh, vectorial properties of uh, optical or plasmonic vortices. And uh, uh, for this, uh, we are going to use the spin and uh, the orbital angular momentum. Uh, and uh, so you understand about the spin uh, uh, angular momentum. So you can uh, generate circularly polarized light, which will have either spin of minus half or plus one half, and uh, this will involve rotating polarization of uh, the optical field. Uh, optical fields can also have op orbital angular momentum, and uh, this involves rotating wave fronts. And uh, these fields uh, form scalar vortices. Now, if we combine uh, the optical and uh, spin angular momentum, we can make vector fields with uh, different uh, distributions. So this uh, yellow uh, donut uh, shows the optical field distribution. There is a, a phase singularity at the center, so the field goes to zero, and uh, the spin uh, can circulate uh, it can uh, have circular polarization, it can have linear polarization. It just depends on how you uh, superimpose these uh, momenta. So uh, angular momenta is conserved as usual. And uh, so we have some total angular momentum, which is orbital plus spin. And uh, what we are interested in is imaging the spin orbit interaction of light in space and time. And to do this, uh, we use uh, um, plasmonic fields and we describe them by Maxwell's equations. And uh, Maxwell's equations are extremely versatile. They will give you all of this, but uh, there's something missing uh, in these uh, Maxwell's equations, which I will discuss. And so what we want to do is we want to use uh, the full uh, vectorial properties of light, uh, so amplitude, phase, polarization, spin, and orbital angular momentum uh, to tailor structured orbital fields, st structured optical fields. So you all know about uh, phase singularities. If you uh, have seen uh, uh, a tornado or a hurricane, uh, at the center, uh, there's a phase singularity, which uh, uh, causes the wind to stop and uh, on the outside it is circulating and uh, this uh, uh, circulating structure can uh, uh, traverse over continents because 
uh, angular momentum is conserved. Okay, so <clears throat> what we are going to do is we are going to do ultrafast microscopy and uh, we are going to have uh, two pulses which excite uh, a metal surface uh, the two pulses can have uh, circular or linear polarization and uh, they will uh, excite uh, a silver film and uh, to excite the surface plasma polariton uh, we need to provide uh, momentum so uh, light cannot excite uh, surface plasma polariton directly because there is a momentum mismatch but we have a sharp structure, sharp on the uh, optical wavelength scale, which uh, generates angular, or uh, it generates momentum so that surface plasmas can be excited and propagate uh, into this film. And uh, if we have circularly polarized light, there will be the K vector uh, that is uh, generated will have some uh, phase. Uh, delay as uh, this light circulates around and uh, this uh, surface plasma polariton will then be focused into the center of the circle and what we detect is electrons which are emitted by nonlinear two photon photo emission and we image these electrons in order to determine the uh, fields that we are generating uh, in this uh, metal film. So uh, this metal film uh, is going to have orbital angle momentum associated with this uh, spin circulation of the excitation light. And uh, it will form a vortex where the field uh, is going to circulate into the center. So there's going to be orbital angular momentum. Uh, and plasmons also have a spin angular momentum. So as I showed you, the uh, electric field circulates as surface plasma polariton propagates and this creates a spin angular momentum which is transverse to the propagation of the uh, plasmonic field so this is the k vector of light that we generate and we will have a spin angular momentum pointing in this direction if uh, the k vector is in this direction if we now reverse the k vector, the spin angular momentum is going to uh, point in this, in the opposite direction. So these surface plasma polariton fields are chiral. And you can calculate the, the spin uh, angular momentum from uh, this uh, real and imaginary uh, cross product of the k vector. Okay, so uh, this is. Uh, how we uh, generate the spin orbit interaction of light and the way we image it is uh, with a photo emission electron microscope. So uh, we have a, a microscope which operates either as a low energy electron microscope or photo emission electron uh, microscope and uh, we excite the surface with a pulse pair normal to the surface and this pulse sphere is going to generate electron emission normal to the surface, which will then propagate through electron optics, through aberration correction, and uh, it will be uh, detected with a uh, few uh, nanometer spatial scale resolution. So uh, we will, this is a, a, multi, uh, a highly parallel detection, so we are uh, detecting two space coordinates and we are changing the time between the pump and propulses so we can generate images of the photo emission uh, as a function of delay between the two identical pump and propulses uh, and uh, so this is what the movie looks like we uh, scan the delay in in about 50 to 100 at a second uh, intervals and we generate images and uh, then we get uh, images of the plasmonic fields uh, forming a vortex and uh, the resolution is much better than the wavelength of light and uh, the time resolution uh, of these images is determined by the delay scanning. 
So we generate a vortex and uh, this vortex will be uh, a stable structure on the time scale of the optical pulse envelope. So this can be a continuous vortex or it could be a few femtosecond vortex. It depends on the envelope of light. And this technique is described uh, in a chemical reviews article uh, from three years ago. So uh, we had uh, a visitor, uh, Robin Huang. Uh, he came to our lab and he knew about plasmonic vortices and he introduced us uh, into doing such research. So I want to tell you more about magnetoelectric interaction. Uh, so uh, you certainly know everything about uh, electric dipole interaction but uh, we can use electric and magnetic fields to excite electric dipole and magnetic dipole uh, interactions. And we can uh, generate a superposition of such excitations uh, in materials that have magnetoelectric response. So 150 years ago, uh, uh, Maxwell described uh, uh, his uh, Maxwell equations, uh, but as I said, they're not complete. So these are the usual equations that you know, but uh, there are other uh, terms that you can add where uh, instead of just having electric field, you have a magnetic field that is acting as an electric field. And instead of just having a magnetic field, you have a, an electric field that is acting as a magnetic field. And so this is the magnetoelectric effect. There are some materials which have <coughs> uh, such response. And uh, for this, you need uh, another uh, Maxwell equation. Uh, you have to add the fifth one, which is the axiom law, where the E dot B term is a source of uh, this theta field and uh, this uh, theta field is the axion field and uh, kappa is the coupling between the electric and magnetic fields and uh, so <coughs> this describes the uh, magnetoelectric uh, response of materials of course uh, in a propagating field in vacuum this term is going to be zero but uh, in a plasmonic system, you can make uh, this E dot B term to be dominant. So axion uh, has been proposed uh, some time ago uh, as uh, a particle that solves the charge conjugation parity problem in strong interactions uh, in high energy physics. Uh, and later it was pro uh, proposed as a uh, candidate for dark matter. And uh, so by generating these, uh, so this E dot B field is a, a source of uh, axion fields, theta, and uh, we hope to be able to eventually uh, use such fields to detect uh, axion dark matter. Now, okay, so I'll share some results uh, now. Uh, in this case, we are going to use linearly polarized light, which is uh, a superposition of left and right circularly polarized light. And we're going to generate uh, optical uh, or plasmonic angular momentum using an Archimedean spiral. So this spiral has a radius that changes by pi uh, as you go around by pi. And this is going to create an optical uh, angular momentum for the left and right circularly polarized uh, fields and um, it will generate a vortex which has a phase singularity at the center. Now to explain how we do these uh, experiments uh, I show you the entire image that the microscope uh, sees and uh, so we this is a photoelectron image uh, of uh, the fields that are excited in the sample and uh, the pump pulse is going to uh, interact with the structure that generates uh, surface plasma polaritons and it will send surface plasma polaritons to the center 
and this will propagate at 300 nanometers per femtosecond. Now, uh, to detect this uh, motion, uh, so, okay, so uh, this is the field created by one pulse, uh, so this field comes to focus, uh, and uh, there, there are some interferences. Uh, this is uh, due to interferences between the optical field that generates the pulse and the propagating pulse, plasma pulse, and also there, there's interference between uh, uh, light that comes from the opposite direction. Now, uh, to image the fields, what we do is we send in a second phase correlated pulse and uh, we generate interference between the plasma wave and this optical field, which is oscillating parallel to the surface. And uh, so this is a movie uh, that we can generate uh, for this uh, structure. But uh, this movie has a contribution from uh, time evolving fields and stationary fields. And uh, we use Fourier analysis to separate such fields. And uh, so uh, after Fourier analysis, we can show that we have a plasmonic vortex, which uh, uh, each one of these uh, red regions corresponds to uh, one cycle of light or plasmon, and uh, the field is propagating in this direction on the top, in this direction on the bottom, and you can see that uh, there is a vortex motion with a phase singularity in the center. So this is experiment and uh, simulation. Okay, so uh, we are using then coherent spectroscopy and microscopy, and uh, we uh, use uh, phase uh, between these two uh, identical fields. Uh, the polarization is defined. Uh, it generates orbital angular momentum and uh, we generate spin orbit interaction of light. And then the question is, where does the angular momentum go? It has to be conserved. And uh, I would claim that uh, the angular momentum must be in the photoelectrons that we detect. We have not imaged that yet. Okay, so this is the movie that I showed you. Uh, and after Fourier filtering, then we can show how these uh, uh, fields uh, form a vortex and they are oscillating uh, on a uh, femtosecond time scale and we are imaging them uh, on nanometer spatial scale. Now we have a three dimensional imaging, uh, two spatial dimensions and one time dimension. And we can extract further information from this. Uh, and uh, we, uh, this is called optical flow analysis, where we uh, uh, extract how fast do these uh, fields uh, evolve. And from the optical flow analysis, we can get uh, information on subdiffraction spatial scale this is uh, imaging of, of about on about 50 nanometer spatial scale, which shows uh, where the field is propagating the fastest. And where it's propagating the fastest is where it's linearly polarized. Where it's propagating the slowest, it is circularly polarized. And uh, this is a calculation of uh, the linear and circular polarization. So we call this the L-line map. Uh, when the, the field is linearly polarized, uh, then the spin is in the surface plane. Uh, when it's circularly polarized, it is above the plane or below the plane. So this gives us uh, the spin distribution of uh, our plasmatic field on uh, uh, few uh, tens of a nanometer and uh, femtosecond time scale. And from this, we can conclude that uh, the spin texture looks like this. So at the center, the spin is pointing up for the circular polarization. Uh, and uh, at the edge where we have this L line, it is uh, pointing uh, in plane. And uh, this, uh, from this uh, spin texture, we can conclude that uh, 
this field consists of three mirror structures. So each one of these structures has a topological charge of one half. So this is a mirror uh, structure. Okay, so I, I'm telling you about uh, polarization of light on, uh, or polarization of surface plasma polaritons on uh, nanometer scale. And um, so I told you that we can uh, image uh, where the plasma is linearly polarized and where it's circularly polarized. And uh, so uh, these uh, structures are called L lines and C points. So uh, light is propagating first at uh, L lines and it's circulating in space uh, at C points. And uh, L lines uh, tend to be connected and C points tend to be isolated points. Okay, so uh, we can uh, uh, quantify this uh, on a point care sphere. So point care sphere gives the is a, a three dimensional plot of the Stokes parameters uh, of a field, and uh, so the Stokes parameters are shown here. The uh, north and uh, south poles uh, correspond to uh, circular polarization of the light and uh, the equator corresponds to uh, the uh, linear polarization of light. So uh, Professor Capasso uh, uh, showed uh, a similar image. And uh, so um, what we're interested in is to use the point care sphere to determine what is the uh, topological charge of the field that we are generating. And the topological charge uh, is defined uh, in this way. Uh, this is uh, a function of the normalized spin. And uh, the question is, how does uh, this uh, normalized spin cover this point care sphere? And uh, if only one half of the point care sphere is uh, covered, uh, so if the polarization goes from linear to circular, uh, then we have a, a meron uh, or topological charge of one half uh, or one half skirmion spin texture. Now, if the spin texture covers the whole sphere, then we have topological charge of one and we have a skirmion spin texture. Okay, and uh, we have played uh, with uh, these uh, coupling structures and uh, uh, linear and circular polarizations of light to, to generate various uh, plasmonic uh, field distributions. And uh, so this uh, shows a progression from a, a triangular structure uh, to square structure, uh, pentagonal structure, and so on. And uh, as we increase the number of uh, uh, sides of this uh, structure, we converge to something that uh, evolves into a circle. So this would be an infinite number of uh, sides of uh, this uh, coupling structure. And uh, so we are interested in the topological charge, how it evolves uh, as we go around here. And uh, what I want to uh, tell you about is specifically is uh, the circular structure. So uh, I told you uh, about the baron structure, but uh, the circular structure generates uh, a skirmion spin texture. And so we have a circular structure uh, to circularly polarized pulses exciting. And uh, what we image uh, in the microscope is this. Now, uh, we are interfering the in-plane field with the surface plasma polariton. So we can determine the in-plane field. And uh, this uh, side of this image is uh, 2 lambda. So we are getting uh, the distribution of the radial field uh, on uh, sub-diffraction-limited uh, spatial scale. Uh, we can use this uh, field and Maxwell's equations to determine the 
surface normal uh, field component. This has a topological charge, so or it, it has a, a singularity at the center, so the phase in the center is undefined and the field strength goes to zero at the center. So this is going to be important. And uh, then we can also determine the angular uh, spatial distribution. Uh, we can determine where the uh, K vector is, uh, or where the field is linearly polarized. And so we are determining uh, the distribution of the K vector on deep sub diffraction limited scale here. And uh, this gives us, uh, uh, this tells us where the uh, spin is in plane and uh, in the center, uh, the circulation is uh, circulating. So the spin is up and uh, at the edge, uh, we have, uh, uh, it goes, it changes by pi so we have uh, a singularity here. And uh, so uh, if we calculate the topological charge within this uh, uh, region, we get that the topological charge is one. So this is uh, the red line is experimental measurement. Uh, the dashed line is a calculation. And we see as we go from the center, we have uh, one skirmion of topological charge of one, and then we have another skirmion and so on. Uh, and uh, so <clears throat> uh, from this, uh, we get uh, the spin texture of uh, our uh, plasmonic field. Now we can go further and uh, we want to address the uh, magnetoelectric effect uh, inside the uh, plasmonic vortices. So, uh, we can ex uh, for a material with a magnetoelectric response, we can uh, uh, write the D field and the B field in the following way. So it's a combination of electric field and the uh, uh, magnetic field. And uh, the B field is combination of uh, magnetic field and the electric field. And uh, we have these coupling constants and uh, so depending on whether, so for a normal material like silver that we're using, these coupling constants will be zero. And uh, so we will have a simple isotropic medium, which we're making anisotropic by the plasmonic field. And then uh, if uh, these uh, quantities are nonlinear, uh, we can have a telogen medium, which is a magnetoelectric uh, uh, medium, or a Pasteur medium, which is a chiral medium. And so uh, this is a bi-anisotropic material, which has, uh, 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 it has, uh, it's asymmetric with respect to parity and uh, time symmetry, and but its PT symmetry is symmetric. Now, uh, if we look at the plasmonic fields at the center of uh, the vortex, uh, the yellow line is uh, the E field, the blue line is B field. And what you see is that at the center of a plasmonic vortex, these fields are parallel. And uh, this shows the angle between the two fields uh, over one optical cycle, and uh, the angle rotates uh, but in the center, it is always parallel. So there is a, a electromagnetoelectric magne response in the center. And uh, so <coughs> these uh, parallel fields have non-zero EB uh, driving term, which interacts with matter unlike optical fields. And uh, the magnetoelectric response, uh, which can uh, uh, excite the axion field uh, is uh, present here, and uh, such fields can interact with uh, topological materials, for example, and uh, they're thought to interact with the uh, uh, axion or dark matter. Okay, so the last thing I want to show you is that uh, we can image uh, this uh, 
magnetoelectric response. And so I showed you that we have uh, these uh, components of the uh, field. Uh, the Z field has a, a phase singularity. We can also calculate the H fields. So um, there is a, the eye of the plasmonic vortex with the phase singularity, but uh, these other fields uh, have the maximum at uh, the center of the vortex. And uh, <clears throat> so we can also uh, determine the spin uh, of these fields. What is most important is uh, we can determine what is the E dot B uh, distribution within this uh, uh, center. And uh, so it has a focus, uh, which is uh, about 0.29 uh, times the wavelength uh, of the plasmon uh, at the center. So the magnetoelectric response is focused in the center and uh, one can uh, obtain a parameter which is uh, magnetoelectric density. So this is where the uh, electric and magnetic uh, or magnetoelectric response is stronger than the dielectric response uh, of a material. And uh, this uh, experimentally is uh, focused to 74 nanometers. And uh, this is a, a time independent quantity because the field is circulating around this area. Uh, this is something I should have erased. So this uh, magnetoelectric response we can uh, find in all of the vortex uh, systems. So uh, they form rays uh, which are uh, focused to within about uh, 10 nanometers. And uh, we plan to use that to uh, study magnetoelectric res response in topological materials. Uh, so the idea is to do point care engineering, and this is to use uh, light matter interaction of vectorial fields to detect axion fields uh, in the near field region. So by placing uh, a topological material next to a plasmonic material, we hope to uh, detect uh, axion fields in solid state. Okay, so what I have shown is that uh, uh, ultrafast microscopy is capable of uh, uh, detecting uh, synthetic axion response uh, in uh, various materials and uh, we eventually hope to be able to use such uh, fields to detect uh, uh, cosmological axion matter or dark matter and uh, Okay, so this was done within my group. Uh, Yan Andai, who is now in China, Southern University of Science and Technology. He's starting this sort of research uh, there. Uh, so he's, he was the main person for the Skirmian uh, research. This is now continued by Sena Yang and Atariya Ghosh. Uh, and uh, Atariya Ghosh is going to be graduating. She's a a uh, very illustrious student, and uh, this is my current group. Uh, and uh, uh, Chen Bin Wang uh, taught us about vortices. Thank you very much.